time isn't chronological ordered. Uh, but I suppose we, we need to talk about the future. You know, I mean, we're filming now with untold cameras. It's taken four hours. You know, there's a VR camera. I know you've had experiences like this in the past where the VR camera hasn't worked properly. So we can't, we, we can't even guarantee this is going to work. <laughs> But isn't that part of the fun a little bit, you, you know? And also the huge frustration is that, you know, people love to run before they can walk, you know? And I think with every technology that I've gone through over the last 25 years, is it, you know, like doing stuff in 3G, let alone 4G or 5G, or it's a nightmare. You know, everyone's trying to do too much too quickly. What would your kind of answer be? I mean, I would say when it comes to AR, in my op opinion, the first example of AR which transformed the entertainment world was subtitles. That turned a film in Iranian into a global product. French, Romanian, whatever. You know, that, that to me is a real example of AR doing things for good. What do you think will be one of the first benefits of VR? What will it do? I know it will bring people, kids off the bus, through the tunnel, you know, it's a nice story. But when it comes to society at large or the entertainment industry or whatever sector you wish to comment on, what are going to be the early wins for VR? Well, I mean, the interesting thing with VR is that the media approach was that it was going to be entertainment and it was going to be gaming, it was going to be film. Um, with the reality, <laughs> ironically, um, was, th <laughs> was that um, training and education and the things that are less sexy to talk about. Um, now, what we're doing here is, is, is shooting this in, in VR because what I particularly wanted to do was have some evergreen content right. that you know, no matter whether someone thinks that it's interesting or not, it, the fact that it will exist in decades to come, as if you were in this room with us, um, that's not possible in any other medium. But I think that is effectively time travel. Yeah, it is. And we are going back, we are going to be actually, in our lifetimes, we're going to be, it seems a bit cheaty, but we are going to be time travellers. Um, so that is very, very powerful. Yeah, it's like um, the sound of one hand clapping. Right? Yeah, in the it's forest. not about a chat room full of avatars. It's not about a racing game. It's it's yeah. it's the ultimate personal level. Yeah. Um, so a virtual environment um, is something that is is immensely appealing because you're you're not bound by something unless you then start to set rules within that environment. Um, so that is fascinating. Um, the ability to, as we say, what we've talked about is the past but if you if you then present the future um, and take it and you know, it's entirely believable so, so when I was in VR for the first 24 hours actually I was I was I, what I wanted to do one of the things I really wanted to do was put on a headset and fall asleep and wake up in VR yeah right um, because the one of the issues with putting on a piece of plastic on the front of your face is that you know that you're going into VR, no matter how convincing the content is, you've got to go through the theatre of putting something on. Um, so if you wake up in VR, you don't think about the, the going in, the, that stepping through the doorway. You just believe everything that's in front of you. So if it's dinosaurs, if it's spaceships, you just think, whoa, dinosaurs and spaceships. You don't think but how I well rendered they are. <laughs> but I wonder how your brain would work like that if you did fall asleep in VR. I mean, well, I can tell you, I did it. Yeah, but, but what, what happened then? What, what happened? I just completely believed what was in front of me. As soon as you woke up. As soon as I woke up, yeah. Um, you know, and then hang on. And then so you fell asleep in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because with, got, the, you, with the spectacles with the headset on. on. Yeah, headset. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you woke up, the first thing you saw was the virtual universe, yeah. and you believed it. Yeah, you just. Did think, it take, you know what? Like sometimes you're in a dream. And it's like, where am I? I'm in a nightmare, I'm in a dream. Oh, yeah, oh, the kettle's on. Yeah, I'm fine, I know where I am. Was it like that? It, it was more like, so, you know, we've, we've been on the conference circuit enough and you, yeah. you find yourself in yet another country with yet another venue. Yeah. And it, it's, it's equivalent to waking up in Riga and thinking you're in Paris. Um, so you, you don't think, oh, is it a dreamlike state? You just think, oh, hang on a minute, I'm, 
Where, Where am I? I? Well, when am I, as we talk about now? Um, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it, it's, it's that. So you, you don't go through that stage of, I don't really believe what I'm seeing, because that would be the same as taking that step through the doorway. You just, you know, like, well, I just saw everything and believed it. You know, you, that wears off within a few but, seconds. But, but, but see, that, see that, again, that does my head in, because whenever I've done it, and certainly not for 24 hours, and I know that I've got these on my face, and then I take them off, I'm so discombobulated, <laughs> as if I've just got off a three-hour, three-day boat journey. You know what I mean? I really don't like the way I feel no. when, when I, let's just say, wake up in the real world after I take off the, the goggles. I mean, but you sound to me like you love it. No, but this, but this is just the point. So what I love is the, the experience, the short, sharp shock of right. of the immersion so you know spending five minutes in an amazing environment is far more beneficial than spending an hour in something that's just engrossing you because you happen to be there so this if you know for, for for all its sins and and facebook now becoming meta you know I, I would i would ask an audience you know are you a meta offsetter sounds like a bit of a bit of a, a meta bit offsetter. of a bit of a bit of a hashtag emerging there but you know rather than simply accepting so rather than simply listening to the scobles and everybody else in the world saying this is how it's going to be this is what you're going to do the book is still here theater is still here tv is still here they weren't replaced by something else. So this is not the future, it's a future. It's a, a future technology platform. When you're outside, what are you contributing? What are you doing? So that moment of, of lacking in clarity and, and discombobulation, you know, that's because you've just, it should be that you've just come out and you're either inspired or you want to do something else or you know, want to experience and appreciate the real world. I agree. I am all over theatre, cinema less, not such a good example, really, because it's more, um, you know, textual books. I'm not so sure that uh, uh, of our generation, yes, we still will have theatre, we still will have football, we still will have um, books. I'm not so, sh so sure about younger people, because what is, what's a younger person going to think about you, you know? Who's this, you know, what do they call it, a Ken? Is it Karen and Ken? <laughs> no disrespect to him. Um, but who's this Ken going off into the metaverse telling me what to think? I've been, I've been brought up in this world for the last 15 years. Who's, who's, who's this guy? What does he know? Well, he's, he's a storyteller. So what the world needs more of are good storytellers. Um, because if you're simply following a line of evolution whether that be human or technological then you're not being actually off you're not being given enough options along the way yeah so if you're not simply <laughs> being told by ken this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do right, okay. but you're being talked with about why you, yeah, okay. you can or can't or should or shouldn't do something that's a far greater bonus than simply being told no and wanting to rebel and, and do yes. On that note, I think, positive note, we'll end it there. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks, Monty. You've made me think, which <laughs> is either good or bad. <laughs> Thank you.